Word defibrillator for today, where we are trusting God for a word from within the word. Hmm. I like, I like, I like. Let's see where we're going to start. We're going to go to James 4. And this was laid on my heart this morning. But he gives us more and more grace. Verse 6. Power of the Holy Spirit to meet this evil tendency. Uh, let's see, what is this evil tendency? Uh, oof, are you ready? What leads to strife? Verse 1. Discord and feuds. How do conflicts, quarrels and fightings originate among you? Do they not arise from your essential desires that are ever warring in your bodily members? You are jealous and covet what others have and your desires go unfulfilled. So you become murderers. Uh, to hate is to murder as far as your hearts are concerned. You burn with envy and anger and not able to obtain the gratification, the contentment and the happiness that you seek. So you fight in war. You do not have because you do not ask. Or you do ask God for them and yet fail to receive because you ask with wrong purpose and evil, selfish motives. Your intention is when you get what you desire to spend it on sensual pleasures. You are like unfaithful wives having illicit love affairs with the world and breaking your marriage vow to God. Do you not know that being the world's friend is being God's enemy? So whoever chooses to be a friend of the world takes his stand as an enemy of God. Or do you suppose that the scripture is speaking to no purpose that says the spirit whom he has caused to dwell in us yearns over us and he yearns for the spirit to be welcome with a jealous love. But he gives us more and more grace, power of the Holy Spirit to meet this evil tendency and all others fully. That is why he says God sets himself against the proud and haughty, but gives grace continually to the lowly, those who are humble enough to receive it. So be subject to God, verse 7, and this is the Amplified Version. So be subject to God, resist the devil, stand firm against him, and he will flee from you. Come close to God and he will come close to you. Recognize that you are sinners. Get your soiled hands cleaned. Realize that you have been disloyal, wavering individuals with divided interests. And purify your hearts of your spiritual adultery. As you draw near to God, be deeply penitent. And grieve, even weep over your disloyalty. Let your laughter be turned to grief and your mirth to dejection and heartfelt shame for your sins. Humble yourselves, feeling very insignificant in the presence of the Lord, and He will exalt you. He will lift you up and make your life significant. My brethren, do not speak evil about or accuse one another. He that maligns a brother or judges his brother is maligning and criticizing the law. And judging the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a practitioner of the law, but a sense and a judge of it. One only is the lawgiver and judge who is able to save, to destroy. The one who has the absolute power of life and death. But you, who are you, that you presume to pass judgment on your neighbor. Come now. And this is for me the verse, the culmination. For today. Verse 13. Come now, you who say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such and such a city and spend a year there and carry on our business and make money. Yet you do not know the least thing about what may happen tomorrow. What is the nature of your life? You are really but a wisp of vapor, a puff of smoke, a mist that is visible for a little while and then disappears into thin air. You ought to instead say, if the Lord is willing, we shall live and we shall do this or that thing. But as it is, you boast falsely in your presumption and of your self-conceit. All such boasting is wrong. So any person who knows what is right to do but does not do it, to him, it is sin. For me, this is extremely powerful, especially in the times that we live at this moment in time where we'll make plans in the next second because the circumstances beyond your control, things change in a moment. So in all this insecurity in life as to what are we going to do tomorrow, well, here we are trying to make things happen. God's saying, hey, just focus on me. Focus on what the Holy Spirit's calling you to do. 
Everything that you do, make sure it's there to bring glory and honor to God, to manifest the love of the Father. And do not be so arrogant to think that you can say what's going to happen tomorrow or not. If it is God's will, it will. So there's our safety and our security. He is in 100% control. He does say submit to God, resist the devil, and he will go. So when it comes to all those attacks from the enemy, all we have to do is stay in submission to God. But he's saying your security is in only one place. Your security can't be in your husband's salary or your salary. Your security can't be in your investments. You can't, you can't have security in your job. Because here we go again. We, we're sitting in a situation where circumstances have changed that for us again. Now we live in an insecure world. And he said, are you friends with that world? In their insecurities, in the things that define them, that give them their value, that give them some kind of self-worth. Are you friends with that? Because there's no security in that ever. Our security can only be in God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. There's your security. We do not live an insecure life in an insecure world. It's a very secure life, knowing the beginning to the end, knowing that we're going to spend time with the Father for eternity because we are in Christ Jesus. There's the beginning and the end of our security. Irrelevant of the circumstances, that will never change. God is God forever. He was there before we arrived. He's going to be there afterwards. Alpha Omega, beginning and the end. There's our security. It might be an insecure world, but we are not of this world. Greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. He is in the world. So if we side with it, we're not allowing God to do what he needs to do. If we are submitted to God, the world will submit to you. Because God is in control. He is your provider. He is your protector. He's the one. You've given your life to him. Why would we have an insecure life? Well, mainly because we're allowing the things of the world to define our abilities, our value. And we've lost focus on who God is. Can you remember that moment when you gave your life to Christ? There was no hesitation whatsoever, no doubt whatsoever, not even a shadow of a doubt. <gasps> it was such a powerful moment. That hasn't changed. Still a powerful moment, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. God is in control. Just felt I needed to let you know today. Get out of that turmoil and that mess that's happening in your mind and in your heart. Focus on the truth. And the truth is you are a child of God. And that's immense security. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your forgiveness. Father, we know what is right to do. And Father, we are going to do it. We are going to submit to you, put you first, and say, God, if it's your will, May it be done. These are our plans. This is what we propose to do, Father. And we know that if we present our plans to you, you will make our thoughts according to your will. And so will our plans be established. What a great adventure. What an exciting moment to sit back and say, Lord, phew, if I see it from the world's perspective, but from the kingdom side, what a moment. Lord, we thank you for your word. In Jesus' name. Amen.